after two weeks of not doing this, like it's, we forgot all of it. It's it's not a matter of really. I've I've been up since seven o'clock this morning working on this fucking podcast, trying to get little, little things here and there going, everything else, and none of, and like I ran out of time, and none of it came came to fruition. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode beta 72 for the 18th of March, 2016. This is the show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos, and we finally got it on a roll, Kent. We're finally going. This is finally the show. It's it, we're, we're doing it. Yay! <laughs> finally! We're only 42 minutes late. Hey, uh, uh, according uh, daylight savings time. We're actually 18 minutes early. That's right. That's... Oh. Excellent point. Yes. I, I forgot to put something in the show notes about daylight saving time. D- d- oh. <sighs> yeah, we both don't like it. Enough no. said. Let's move on. Yeah. I actually saw a, uh, I meant to put it in there. <laughs> there there's a, a quick YouTube video, like a two minute YouTube video, explaining all my points about getting rid of daylight saving time and just going to a universal time for the entire planet. It was amazing. Is it the CPG, is it the CPG Gray? No, 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 no. Totally different one. The one oh, we just oh, popped okay. in my in my Twitter feed, but I don't remember what it was, and I'm not going to find it. So we're completely off the trails. Um, that's the track and the rails. And uh, man, how was your week? Your last two weeks, like it's been it's been a while since we did a show. Yeah. <clears throat> so last weekend we decided to just take a week off, and yeah. You know, no, we, no, really no, we, no, 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 we didn't. Kinda... No, we didn't. We we decided to do all kinds right. of shit. We just never got around to most of it. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right. This, that, that was like the funnest weekend of all fucking time. <laughs> that was, yeah, I forgot. I yeah, had a, I might have had a, a drink or two. Yeah, yeah, that, that was that was that was that was standard. That was that was par for the course right there. Holy <laughs> shit! Um, yeah, man. So last weekend we were at South by Southwest Interactive, and we were badge holders, and we got to go in. No wait, wait. are you no. are you drinking again? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's the old standby Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. All right, all right. Not a sponsor currently. Could be uh, great if they were. Yeah, yeah. You, not a, not a, not even a monetary sponsor. Just <laughs> cut a cut a discount. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, no, but we were not badge holders, but we were uh, Diamond Club members at South by Southwest in Austin. Yep. For the well. For we anal. were there for anal. Yeah, we were there for anal. A- anal. Anal 16. Like, you know, it's not just any anal. <laughs> <laughs> anal 16. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, um, the, so, yeah, the, the uh, we, we we streamed yeah. a little bit on uh, Friday night, the little meetup that we had. End up that, uh, well, Tom and, and Brian and, uh, and Justin and uh, Jaime, they all showed Everybody. up. Everybody yep. was there. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, like all the diamond clubbers that were at South by at the time showed up. Um, I think the only person that wasn't there, or that I don't remember seeing anyway, was um, Captain Murphy. Uh, well, I think he was the only person I didn't see that. Bryce night. didn't show up either. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, Bryce yeah. went shopping and then got. Yeah, he he was too busy. Something. He was too busy uh, prepping for the next day's festivities. That, <laughs> yeah, that went off. I with, can't blame him. Went off without a hitch, by the way. Like it oh, was, it went off perfectly. There was there was no delay. There were no setup uh, problems. Um, everything was was amazing, and uh, it just all the pieces just fell perfectly into place, and nobody vomited, and uh, everything was perfect. Um, yep. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait. What? Yeah, yeah. It was, but it, it, you know what? It turned out pretty good. We had a uh, there was a great night attack live show. Uh, the Possum Posse was there, played uh, my favorite Possum Posse song, and uh, another one that's been growing on me for a while, and uh, a couple other tracks, and, and man, it was really good. It was a really good time. Dude, oh, it was it was excellent. It, it, if you have not seen or heard, well, I, I definitely recommend you watch uh, Night Attack episode 108, I believe it was. Sure. The the live, basically anal. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, I believe it was episode 108. Of Night Attack, go check it out. You can see me and Amos in little clips of it. So, uh, yep, yep. Um, anyway, good times. It was it was so much fun, so much fun. Um, uh, but the the greatest part for me though was getting to meet in the flesh 
so many members of Diamond Club. Yeah. It was holy shit. It was awesome. Uh, yeah, we've gotten was... to know them a little bit in, in chat realm and a few of them we've talked to over Skype. Uh, actually, quite a few of them at this point we've talked to over Skype. Um, and a couple of them we met in person last year, but we didn't have the... There was no context. Right. Yeah, we didn't really have the context. Yeah, but was... this year, all the context was there. It was a great time. Uh, man, love you, love you, Diamond Club. It was so awesome, and I cannot wait for the next meetup. Yeah, so uh, cool. it was, well, the next meetup is actually going to be in Vegas. Uh, Tin Beck is hosting it. Yeah, uh, that's is that June? Uh, when is I believe that so. I think it's like the the second weekend of June. I'm not I'm not sure. Something, I know it's yeah. it's just beyond the realm of possibility for me to attend. Otherwise, I would be there. Yeah, um, yeah. We'll we'll see what happens. If if it's over a weekend, I might be able to swing it. Which I'm sure it is. It it is. It's just I think it's the second weekend of June, but I'm not sure. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, we went to South by Southwest. Uh, that was amazing. Uh, Junior joined us after he did his little uh, Irish goodbye the other day or a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah, drug my wife out, so people actually got to put a face to you know. I I got to actually prove that I have a hot wife, and I'm not just you know saying <laughs> it. Um, so how much did you pay that model to pretend to be your wife for the weekend? Um, I pay her all of my salary, and she gives me an allowance back every uh, <laughs> every paycheck. So that's that's pretty much how that works. Okay, uh, okay. It's, it's so a, it's it's a long term deal. It's okay. a it's a four year contract. We renew every four years, and uh, it just goes from there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I tell you what, man, I, I immediately had to fly back here to Korea, and that was an experience. Uh, we already yeah, know that I, I don't care too much for customs. Um, and uh, so, uh, okay, first of all, I got a great seat on the way back. I was in the exit row, had the bulkhead in front of me, so it was like exit row and bulkhead, so I had like all the space. Like I, I could hold a small nice. conference in the space in front of my seat. Um. It was pretty. It was, it was awesome. There's no one, no one sat next to me, which I don't know if that was a case of bo or just pure luck. But either way, I was good with it, and uh, I slept for a good portion of it. Um, and I was right right behind the bathroom, so I got to kind of monitor the bathroom. You know, because it's like a fourteen and a half hour flight. Like you, if you go on that flight and you're not peeing, something's wrong. Um, well, I I had to also go, you know, take a dump. So uh, not one of the most comfortable things to do on an airplane. Uh, yes. I specifically waited. There's, there's these, these, uh, there's like a, a, a caterpillar effect, you know, um, like a whole bunch of people try to go to the bathroom and then it would be nobody for hours. And then a whole bunch of people try to go, then nobody, you know? And I don't know if it was like tied in with the mov- in- endings of movies or some shit, but whatever. Uh, by the way, one of the movies was the force of force awakens was on the plane. So, Oh shit. Nice. There's that. Um, so I t- tried to time it to where no one was going to the bathroom and I had, you know, so I could time this shit. And I went in there. First of all, if you are a large person, like larger, any, any larger than me at all, either height wise or width wise, that has got to be the most miserable fucking experience in the world because there's not room in those. Uh, uh, it was, uh, it, I, oh, I hated it. So I'm in there. And again, there are, there are a total of like six lavatories on this plane. I sit down. Well, first of all, I clean the seat because that's mandatory in do. a fucking airplane. As you do. Like even more so than normal. I sit down, and as soon as I get get sat down, I'm hearing knocks on the door. Like, first of all, who the fuck are you to come knocking on on my door trying to tell me that I need to go like give you space, or whatever? And then there's plenty of other lavatories. Not to mention the fact that I've only been in there for like thirty seconds. Well, what you didn't realize is you weren't the only one watching the bathroom. Somebody well, was watching you watch the bathroom, and as soon as you went in there, they're like, "Oh, oh, it's time." First come, first serve, bitch. Like I was, <laughs> but it 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 pissed me off. Like, and maybe maybe it probably pissed me off more than it should have. But it it was really fucking irritating to me. Um, so th- there was that. And then, you know, that situation died down. I took another nap, uh, watched the last hunger games installation because what better time to watch shitty movies than when there's a perfectly good shitty movie in front of you. So I went ahead and watched that. Um, it was, uh, I'll, uh, it, it, um, hmm. I'm not going to watch it again. That's what I'll say about it. I'm not going to watch it again. Um, so, 
before I get to even get on the plane, I realized there's no reason for me to come back to Korea. None. Zero. Zilch. I came back uh-huh. not because of a sense of duty or a sense of, of patriotism or, or personal obligation. I came back specifically because if I didn't come back, I'd end up in jail and I wouldn't get paid. Right. Like yep. that, that was it. And that was like a weird reality for me to, to come to for that. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. So there, that was just one of those things. It was like, I, I just, I, I'm not, I don't want to come back. Well, when I land... When you arrive in a different country, you got to fill out customs forms and shit like that. You, This is the order in which you're going to do it if you come to Korea. They give you the customs forms about an hour out. You fill out your customs forms the best you can because nobody's going to read it. Nobody gives a shit. Um, unless you don't have it. Then then like you are the epitome of the asshole because why didn't yeah. you have this form I'm not going to look at. When you get off the plane... You're going to run towards customs. You're going to run towards customs. You're not going to like walk. You're not going to gingerly mosey on through. And if there's an old lady in front of you with more bags than she has weight, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm telling you now just to push the bitch out the way and fucking go. Because I, I was being the nice guy and waiting for this lady to walk to the part where it got wider and I could just pass her easily. And I almost got trampled. Like four people pushed me out of the way to get around the old lady. Yeah. And then I still had to get around the old lady. So I just fucking dodged and weaved. I like I kicked one of her bags. Like not intentionally. I didn't like kick it down the hallway or anything. <clears throat> but I, I right. led the way with my leg against her bag to allow myself room to get through. And the rest of the people just stayed behind the old lady. Like I was I wasn't, I wasn't getting trampled again. But let me tell you about customs itself here in Korea. Now, I already know that my experience in Dallas was fucking miserable. Just complete shit. A bunch of idiots. Not the idiots at this place. No. But you get into these lines, and they have like five terminals open for foreigners, and they have like 15 open for Korean nationals. There were only like 15 Korean nationals on the plane. There was no line over there at all. So did they filter some of us over to those lines to help us get through? No. The other 500 people in line all waited for these five openings. By yeah. the time I got through, now I got through pretty quick. I, I got two customs to the customs line pretty quickly, so I can only assume that I was one of the first people through it. By the time I got to my, my, uh, my carousel to pick up my bags, they'd already been pulled off and the next plane was coming in. That's how long it took me to get through customs. Yeah, customs is always horrible. Well, when you say customs, you actually mean immigrations. Sure. Yeah, that's the worst. It's it's one, usually it, customs is like, yeah, you're good, go. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's oh, yeah. That is the worst part of international travel. Even worse than the 746 hour flight. Yeah. Is that goddamn two to three hour clusterfuck? At immigration. Oh, and uh, I was trying yeah. to get I was trying to get on the airport Wi-Fi to let let my family know that I'd landed stuff like that because I didn't have my SIM card installed because I didn't have a little extraction tool thing, you know. Um, mm. So I'm sitting there texting on the Wi-Fi, and the lady comes over to me and she's like, uh, "No phone, no phone." And I was like, "Okay, well that's fair enough. You're not supposed to have your phones open and out in customs, right?" So I put my phone back in my pocket and I look over, and right next to me there's like five people that all have their phones out. So apparently, just the tall white guys can't have their fucking phones out. Yeah, I was I was highly irritated about the whole about the whole experience. So there you go. There's a there's there's all that. It's so hard to be white. Yeah, it's it's not. It's, it's like <laughs> I know. Like oh boy, it, it doesn't suck nearly as bad as I say it does. But when it does, it's like this is fucking stupid. But we'll get into uh, my- we'll get we'll get into some some racist and uh, anti racist thoughts a little bit later. How was your week? Yeah. Looking forward to that. Um, did my taxes. I'm sorry. <clears throat> yeah, I um, uh, I realized that not being in the military mm-hmm. is a serious tax problem. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> you know how when you're in the military, you get like a million tax breaks, basically? Like, oh, oh, you're serving? Oh, uh, now here's our money. Uh, Basically, it's what it's what it's felt like for like the last 20 years. It's like, oh, I'm not actually owing a tax. I'm getting these credits and I actually get, you know, a pretty decent refund and not basically not paying any taxes. Uh, 
at least that's how it's felt to me. Okay. Um, I've only I was only in the military just over half of last year, mm-hmm. and then I started drawing retirement. And then right after I started drawing retirement, I got a normal regular job. Mm-hmm. So I had three sources of income. Th- yeah, three three W twos I had to file. <clears throat> so I use H and R Block, and there's a little little counter. Actually, it's on this side. Mm-hmm. Little little counter that keeps track of your of what your refund or your tax or whatever. So I, I put in my my W two for military first, and it was like some sick ass number, like. You know, seventy four thousand dollars that that I'm gonna get back. And I'm like, well, obviously, a grossly exaggerated there, but a, a significant number. And I was like, oh, fucking awesome, cool. This is looking good. Then I put in my retirement W two, and that shit was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, oh shit. So then I put in my my regular job, my current job W two, mm-hmm. and that shit was like. It like bottomed out to like, I think I'm getting like three dollars. What? No, I mean no, 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 no. That that's before I I was actually in the negative before I started putting in my you know like child tax credit and shit like yeah. that. And uh, all said and done, I didn't actually submit it yet because I'm I'm trying to find some receipts for uh, some donations that I did last summer, and uh, there was some other expense that I was going to try to claim too. So yeah. I haven't f- actually filed it yet, uh, but I think. Right now, I'm sitting at a hundred and something dollars for a refund. Wow. So, yeah. So yeah. the glory days of of military getting more than a grand I, back. That's that's done. He <laughs> said more than a grand. I our, our return was considerably more than that. But we had house expenses and and repairs and selling the house and right. And we took a yep. loss because yep. we didn't have anybody renting and everything else. We actually got a pretty good return back this year. But the return we got back barely made up for the loss on the sale of the house and the money we weren't getting because of the uh, the lack of renters while we were trying mm-hmm. to sell it. So uh, it kind of kind of came out as a wash by no fault yeah. of the tax system. Right, but, right, right. right. <clears throat> yeah, but anyway, that's right. that's pretty much that's that's about all I've done since I've been back from Austin. Yeah, I'm sure there's a sure uh, there's a, a geeky thing in there somewhere, man. Um. Yeah. Oh well. The the thing that I put in in the notes for the the geeky thing because I couldn't think of anything that I did that was particularly geeky other than what we did at South by, so I just went ahead and threw in there. <laughs> I wrote it as "Go fuck yourself, Hitler," mm. and uh, the reason the reason I wrote it is as because I took two of my contender cards to South by two of my favorite contender cards that I wanted Justin to sign, and of course he was you know Justin being Justin he was more than happy to sign them. Uh, so the the cards that I had him sign were "Go fuck yourself" and "Great idea, Hitler." So nice. for the video watchers, there's the the jury signed cards. Um, so pretty cool. I, I haven't thrown them back in the deck box yet. Had them sitting over here uh, by the computer. So I I figured I'd show and tell them. Um, nice. Yeah, man. What 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 do you think was the geekiest thing you did? Because I'm sure you did. Plenty of geeky shit this week. Um, I did. However, the the things that I would rather, actually rather mention are helping out with the live stream on Saturday with the uh, Dime Club event, which was yep, yep. a lot of stress. And I don't know how Sergeant Muffin handled it, but he made magic happen on that somehow. And uh, I got to interview Tom Merritt, like the Dr. Tom Merritt on Friday night. Tomas, Tomas Merritt himself. <laughs> Dude, like... Tell me that was not a dream come true. For it you. it was amazing. It was it was so fucking awesome. And the the really killer part is that he was so cool about it. He was just like, yeah, well, of course we're gonna fucking do an interview. Like, <laughs> yeah, dude. I know. Tom, okay, for you guys that have never met Tom, he is legit the coolest motherfucker on this earth. <laughs> like he he really is. Like I mean, if if you watch DTNS or Current Geek or whatever. Like obviously he's a cool dude. He's a pretty chill dude. He's even cooler than what he portrays himself as. It's, mm. it's Tom is Tom is great. He's he's amazingly humble for all that he's done and his uh, accomplishments in the um, uh, 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 journalism and podcasting world. Absolutely, and I I jokingly kind of 
to myself or in my my own little, little inner circle, I refer to Tom as the Godfather of podcasting mm. or the Godfather of podcasters. Uh, so like, if you know, if I'm showing somebody a picture, like a, a selfie I took with Tom or whatever, I'm like, yeah, that's that's me with the Godfather of podcasting. Yeah, you know, and <clears throat> but he he doesn't portray that at at all in person. Like the the guy is just the guy is just awesome. Yeah, but so so when I was because I brought you guys a, a microphone when you guys were about to record. Um, it, so I was out there kind of in the mix of it. I took a few pictures. Mm-hmm. And, like, dude, like, I was so thrilled for you to be able to interview him. And I was just like, I had this, like, grit. The whole walk back into into the, uh, into the Darwin's, I was just, I just had this grin. Like, oh, that's fucking awesome. Like, I was so, yep. I was so happy for you. Yeah, that Check was that box, dude. Yeah, that that was awesome. Um, it was uh, it was, I I tried not to fanboy out too much. Um, of course, I've been right. I've been listening to Tom since what uh, middle of '08 or whatever. Um, been consistently listening to whatever he put out because it's it's been great. So, um, yeah, that, that was a that was that was an experience. That was awesome, and uh, yeah. ha- handled it like a like a pro. Like it was just a a thing. Yeah, so. dude, I cannot wait for that episode of Undaunted to publish because I I'm. Really looking forward it, to hearing it. It was that. actually uh, supposed to come out uh, this morning, um, your time, and uh, I was waiting. That didn't happen. No, there, I had. I realized that I've forgotten a question from about that. I've, I forgot to ask Tom a question, so I emailed it to him, and then he replied with the answer. And I just haven't had like the gumption to sit down in front of the mic and actually record the question and uh, read his response. And I, I'm not sure how I'm going to put that in there, so I might just. Um, just include it in the show notes. Yeah, that's that's Probably. what I think I might do. I'll just leave the audio as is and just rec- put it in the show notes. So, um, but yeah, it, it was great and it, it's all ready to go. It just that w- once I decide that little factor right there, it's ready to just you know upload and publish. So, um, but yeah, that was that was a uh, that was that was the geekiest thing I did all week. Sweet. So, all so right, did, and did, uh, go ahead. Did you what? Did you watch a TED talk? I did not. Uh, with everything going on, I did not bother. Um, Although I know you watched one, well, I started to. Um, so two <laughs> weeks ago, we had the Lienzo team on, and mm-hmm. Edgar said that he had done a TED talk, which mm-hmm. I didn't know. Right. And I was like, "Oh, this is fucking awesome! So, I'm gonna so, use this as my next TED talk." So here's here's the bad thing: I actually knew that he had done a TED talk and had forgotten about it until he mentioned it. <laughs> well, right. At least you knew about it. Yeah. So I, all right. So I was like, "This is sweet." So I. Pulled it up. Yeah, about to watch this TED Talk with my buddy Edgar. Shit. I only understand about maybe a quarter of it because it's all in Spanish. In uh, Espanol? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I no, I I got the basic gist of what he was saying. I only listened yeah. to probably the first couple of minutes. Was whatever. it, was it not transcribed? Gist, but it was... I'm sorry? Was it not transcribed? No. Well, this was... I, I used the YouTube link. I didn't go searching. Uh, okay, there so, you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I got maybe a quarter of what he was saying, but I also had the advantage of already like going into it knowing what it, what the talk was about. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, Edgar, if you're watching or if you watch or listen to this later, you need to do another TED Talk. Because <laughs> your lazy ass doesn't want to transcribe it. <laughs> Yeah, that'll happen. That'll I just happen. like I just I just love for people that I know to be doing TED talks. That's yeah, fucking awesome. pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Just like uh, Mary Nichols when I had her on Undaunted. You know, she's exactly. having, having been TED talker. Um, so man, let me tell you. I, I got to tell you, dude. There's a. Uh, uh, I get up every day and I check my Twitter stream and, and this. There's usually not anything on there that's like wow. You know, it's there's something. Sometimes things on there that make me think, like the video I mentioned earlier, and you know, catch up on on people that I follow, you know, their little day to day life shit. Because most of the people that I follow don't put their day to day life; it's it's actual funny stuff or tech stuff or whatever. Um, saw something today. Uh, Universal Pictures made different straight out of Compton trailers for different races. Uh, yeah. Um, that headline kind of grabbed me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost clickbaity, but it, it's 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 true to the article. So I I don't I, I don't want to call it clickbaity, but it's yeah, it's definitely uh yeah. My my instant reaction was the fuck. Yeah, yeah. 
but yeah, no, absolutely. It it clicked baited the fuck out of me, but so you're and, right. And here's here's Please. the here's the uh, here's the kicker. Um, well, I'll, I'll get into it a little bit. So what they did is they created two trailers and they used your demo, not your demographic information, but your interests, your friends, and other other information like that to find out on on Facebook on Facebook to to decide what your ethnicity was basically sure, okay sure. essentially um and what they did is they took out the or they they modified it to where if you were white you got one if you were black or hispanic you got a different one um the normal trailer and this is the kicker to me the normal trailer uh included nwa references and was the one that we all saw if you went to youtube and looked at it the one right. aimed at Caucasians did not refer to NWA at all, and instead stressed Ice Cube as an actor and NW and uh, 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 Dr. Dre, Dre as the founder of Beats. That blows my fucking mind. <laughs> I, I had no idea this other trailer existed. Yeah, neither did I. How can you promote that movie with Ice Cube? Is an actor and Dre made beats. Like, yeah, that has yeah. nothing to do with the right. rise of NWA. I mean, right. okay, it's the like you know tenfold result maybe at the end, like the modern day, sure, but that's not what that movie was about. But like, see, they gave because we, you and I, are Caucasians. We are white American males. Like, sure, the epitome of everything that's not supposed to be in any way, shape, or form racist. Like, we're the ones, you know, anyway. Sure, 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 sure. They modified it for us. <laughs> Dude, that kind of offends me. Because, uh... <laughs> but at the same time, I can understand exactly where they're coming from with it. No, I... I I get, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so let's, let's, let's break this apart. Okay, let's, 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 let's dig into this. Okay, God okay. This, all right, so first of all, let me, let me state for the record that I listened to a lot of NWA when I was in junior high and high school. Right. I was there with a you. Lot. Yes. Right. So I think, I think most of us like in our age group, I think most of us fucking white dudes went through a gangster rap phase in high school. That's a fairly universal experience for dudes our age. Right. Okay. Uh, sure. I grew up in Southern California, so it was it wasn't a gangster rap thing to me. It was just music, right? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I didn't I didn't realize that wasn't the norm until I went to Indiana. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's either it's either hard rock, Southern rock, or, or country, or, or yeah. I, I, no, that's basically it. That's basically the three <laughs> kinds of music that the, exists in Indiana. The, the new rock, the old rock, and the country. <laughs> right. Uh, yep. yeah, but, but you, you hit about eighth or ninth grade and for whatever reason you want to listen to gangster rap. I don't know. I don't know how that happens, but. Well, especially in uh, Indiana, it, you went to the same, like the same elementary school, your entire elementary career. Then you go into junior high and now you're mixed in with all the other towns from the area. Yeah, but they're also. The, the so, right. But if, if it, white bread, it, it's a matter of if any of them have discovered it now, everybody discovers it. That's true. Yeah, I think that's what happened. You know, um, it's like it's like anyways, if you if your school had a cold, nobody gave a shit because it's just your school. Now you're going to everybody, and now you're bringing your school cold to everybody else, and and everybody's got it. Like right. seventh seventh okay, grade is just so, a cesspool of fucking ideas and disease. So what I what I think was going on here because I recently tried to explain to somebody my love and respect for NWA. Uh, obviously, I'm not. A black dude. Um, you, you're not the st stereotypical not demographic. The, that you nailed it. Thank you. However, like I said just a few minutes ago, I discovered this at a very impressionable age. I was a, uh, I don't know, 14, 15 years old probably when I discovered them. So not only were they shocking, they were, um, uh, d dare I say, outrageous. Uh, unexpected i guess uh that it, which was part of the appeal to me mm -hmm. was that holy shit like i, I don't want to get caught listening to this right so 90 i would say 95 percent of my nwa listening was with 
earphones on or earbuds in. Well, I don't think I had ear. I don't. Do we have earbuds? Back uh, then? Only if you had a Nintendo Game Boy. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think I had these like these big like Walkman headphones. Yeah. But not not a real Walkman like the the fake like twelve dollar model from Walmart. Or yeah. Kmart from Kmart. It's from Kmart. <laughs> back, back when back when Kmart was still a store worth going to. Exactly. Maybe. Uh, so, like, all of these things were were a part of it because they did talk about you know a lot of dirty stuff that really, like, nobody really has any business listening to. It's just fucking comedy at that point. Um, but they, if you get past that and listen to them, they had a message, and it was. It, it was a fairly deep message. It was about, we want opportunity. We want a chance. We want, you know, the same things that everybody else wants. Look at us. Like, like the, 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 you know, the shock value and all that was like their call to attention. Like, like everybody look at us, look how crazy we are. Look how outrageous we are. And then once you start looking at them, that's when you can hear, what you know what they're actually trying to say Mm -hmm. and it was i don't know it spoke to me when i was when i was a young teenager and you know even as a white kid in indiana which was obviously not the target audience um i I, well i think i think their target audience honest honestly was was equal parts equal parts their contemporaries like their you know um uh you know black youth uh, that are you know struggling growing up in um, underprivileged neighborhoods or what have you. So central of and right, but yeah, basically. And the equal, the other part was like the rich white people that are keeping them down. I guess basically, you know, fuck the man kind of mm-hmm. kind of vibe. I guess um, they were speaking to both, and I was really neither. I was just some you know little skinny white kid in Indiana, um, but I heard their message and I fucking. I thought it was great. It was it was wonderful. It was eye opening. Um, not just you know, I appreciated the music, but I also like I I saw a perspective that I had never really considered before. Um, I don't know. They were they were they were pretty influential on my on my young mind, and I was pretty excited about th- this movie coming out. And I only saw the the real trailer. <laughs> I guess I I, I want to go searching for this like white person. Trip. See, that's that's one of the things that, that got me is I I want to know like did I see this white person trailer and just not realize it? <laughs> like did did I not pick up on the differences? I, I, am I the fucking problem? <laughs> <laughs> When I was started reading this article, I was like, "What? I didn't see the real trailer." I was like, "Oh wait, I didn't watch this on Facebook. I no. fucking went in search of it when I found out about this movie." Yep. When the trailer was announced, I was like, "Oh, I have to go find this trailer." I mm-hmm. found the trailer. So yep. No, I did not watch it on Facebook. So, so my next question is: We've been targeted forever, just for advertisement purposes, which a trailer is technically an advertisement. Um. Mm-hmm. We've been targeted for a century of advertisements between radio, magazine. There, they, you know, you don't have uh, uh, makeup companies putting putting advertisements in fucking uh, fish and game monthly. You know, like, <laughs> oh, oh, no, absolutely, yeah. You, you know, ads it, have always been so. So is before. this is this like the next generation of that being? Is this the next the next iteration of that purpose of trying to focus on focus a specific message towards a specific demographic, um, and we're just pissed off because there's a racial undertone to it, or is this a natural progression that we shouldn't be offended by because they didn't actually have uh, 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 ethnic or ethnicity information to derive from. It was just from the uh, habits and the likes and dislikes and friends and things like that of the people that use Facebook. Like that's where I'm torn with this. Like, should I be offended? Because I, I got to tell you, I'm not because I don't care. Um, right. But so, okay. What, what offended me? Well, not really offended me, prepared me to be offended was the headline. And I started out with the mindset of, of I'm going to be offended by this because this is bullshit. You don't do racist shit and profiling and blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm with you. Um, 
But to answer your questions, is this the next phase? You're damn right. Uh, but the other part of this, anything new. Right. This so is, this is, I mean, targeted ads. Since the internet has existed, basically, there have been targeted ads. And right. it's been based on it's been based on all sorts of things. The, the, the interests, um, previous clicks, um, all of those sorts of things. Right. So, so, so know, absolutely nothing new. It's just the context of it being a trailer and that someone actually gave a talk about how they developed the trailer. That's what is new. So we have and been doing we, it is not, new. we have been joined by, uh, by junior. Um, what up junior? What's up, brothers? Li li live on air, uh, Junior. We are we are uh, currently talking about um, Facebook and um, Universal Pictures making a different straight out of Compton trailer depend to issue to Facebook users depending on what they thought their demographic was, so that blacks and Hispanics would get a different version of the trailer than white people. Why the hell would we do that? <laughs> <laughs> thought we're all americans here you know maybe we'll just uh we'll press on with that you know see that's uh yeah that's 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 kind of yeah that, that uh I, I can't argue with that um it that was kind of one of the things we were, we were just discussing like i don't you know is this the next iteration of um of advertisement of of advertising to a specific people a uh, group of people a specific demographic whether it's based on race or not or is this uh you know something is it should we be offended by this? Is essentially what it comes down to. Honestly, I would say that anything like that um, more or less causes any more more divide in this country than we need. You know what I mean? We already have that going on, and in too many ways, shapes, or forms. You know, I think people aren't coming together enough as it is. You know, and uh, you know, I I don't know. I don't see that as a very positive thing to start. Oh, only go for these demographics rather than across the board is, you know, for, for Americans or for different people, different countries, maybe, you know, you can do it in, you know, if you're going to go on Ireland and have somebody with an Irish accent do it or something, I don't know, maybe that'd be all right. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, no, I, you know, Junior, I agree with everything you said, but I think the way that this works, like the algorithm that they used for this particular case was that they did, they did targeted advertising based on, uh, likes like what what you associate yourself with so for example if i was like i'm a skinny white kid from indiana but if i had a lot of if i liked a lot of facebook pages for you know different hip-hop artists or rappers or or what have you i would have my facebook feed would have been targeted for the so-called black version right but if i liked um you know kittens and donald trump and that was a low blow but uh so so you know, so are you, are you trying to say the kittens and don are you, are you trying to say the kittens and donald trump are mutually exclusive from nwa <laughs> <laughs> um i uh, um <laughs> so so no, yeah all right. Any any, any any final points on this? I don't, I don't want to rehash it too much. But any any uh, any, any final points on this? Um, I have one, but I'll wait wait until you guys give yours. No, uh, I no. Go ahead, go ahead. I I I pretty much said everything I was going to say. Junior. Yeah, I think I'm about covered mine too. Okay. So <laughs> my, my mine is this. I uh, I sent uh, as soon as I saw it in my Twitter feed, I sent it to my wife, who is uh, African American of descent. And, or of African American descent, and she was like, "What the fuck, really? Why?" Mm -hmm. And it, it, I, I was happy that it kind of crossed uh, crossed those boundaries. Like this is, and and again, I can kind of see their point, but uh, I think this is this can be interesting going forward. All right. Well, okay. I have a final word. Of quick. course, of course. So <laughs> naturally, <laughs> right, but because this was not this was not a racial demographic. This was an interest demographic. So, yeah. if I'm interested in hip hop, I'm gonna know about NWA, who put out music 25 years ago. Where if I'm just a, you know, I I listen to country music and that's it. I don't know who the fuck NWA is, especially if I'm 20 years old. 
and I listen to country, how the fuck am I even gonna have heard of NWA? But I but I've watched uh, whatever the last bullshit movie that Ice Cube did. I have a set of Beats headphones. You know what I mean? So if you're targeting that way, like that kind of makes sense. You're gonna get your message across to what they're interested in. You know what I'm, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily a racist thing. Does it break down by race? Probably about eighty to eighty-five percent. Yes, but that's not specifically because of race. Right. Anyway, that's that's it. That's why. That's it. I have oh, nothing, right. nothing else. <laughs> All right, Junior. So, uh, so since you just hopped on, man, how was your week? Well, it was outstanding. I haven't had the wife or the kid at the house. Actually, I've been bored out of my mind. <laughs> To tell you the truth, but uh, <laughs> to pester, uh, you know, order around or anything. So, <laughs> uh-huh. wife order the kid around. That's how that works. Lot, 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 lots of uh, lots of Pornhub and some French fries, right? Right, you gotta love it, man. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> hundred eight dollar pants. Right. Don't forget about the hundred eight dollar pants. That's right, hundred eight dollar pants every day. So, um. So, um we uh, yeah. I, we, uh I, now we're getting feedback. Now we're getting feedback. Echo, echo, echo. Yeah, we're gonna need Junior to pop some headphones on. Oh, I need to pop some in here. I can put some on real quick, but I ain't got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing worth it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's this, dude? This is gonna be ridiculous. Hashtag still in beta. Yeah, there it is, dude. It's definitely still in beta. How you doing? I got headphones on. Now I look official, but they're not doing anything, all right? Well, it, shit. That's yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not effective. Yeah, I'm not. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, just turn your volume down a little bit. That 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 might work. Um, yeah, so I got a, uh, every week. Every week since I've gotten my PS4, I hop on um, to check to see what deals there are on the the PlayStation Store. Every week, because. I like buying shit uh, at less than than cost. Essentially, I'm not a big fan of spending you know more money than I have to. Well, what? <clears throat> that? yeah. Well, it, anyway, uh, <laughs> I I think the PlayStation Store has been like focusing specifically on my wish list, and I'll tell you why. For the last four weeks, the following games have been on sale. Diablo 3, Grand Theft Auto 5, um, The Last of Us, and Assassin's Creed. Not necessarily in that order, but for the last four weeks, those games and their associated titles have all been on sale. All of which were on my wish list. I'm not this lucky to have these games at 60% off. So, so do you think do you think they're targeting like targeting the audience? So like if Assassin's Creed was on sale for you, maybe my wish list contains fuck, I'm at a loss. Yeah. Whatever the newest, coolest PS4 game is, maybe that's on sale for me. No, it's 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 it's, 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 it's the same for everybody. I just what I'm what I what I think actually happened is that uh because I bought mine about the same time as you know, right around Christmas time, or everything else. Now there's a big group of people that have them, so the, all these games have been showing up on the wish list. Like, oh, I want to catch up all these awesome back titles and shit like that. But I'm really excited for the next couple weeks because I've got a couple more games in there that I really want to get at sixty percent off. <laughs> so um, I hate the P- PlayStation Store. I think it's a big piece of shit store. It's a big store a shit sandwich. Um, but if they're going to keep giving me 60% off shit that I was going to buy anyway, I'm really happy about it. Absolutely. No, that's, that's pretty awesome. So yeah, I acquire the majority of my stuff. Well, I'm an Xbox guy myself. So, but yeah, it's one of those. We won't hold it against Uh, you. I know. Right. 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 (laughs) So speaking of, speaking of, of, uh, PlayStation. So I'm I'm hearing some, some rumblings about a PlayStation 4.5. Right, right. This is one of the things that just uh, just br- just hopped up in my Twitter feed earlier today as well. Yeah. Um, I've e- I've even heard it referred to as a a, a PS four K. Yes, yes. What they're li- what what the rumor is is that PlayStation is going to release a updated console, an updated console that will be capable of four K video for games. It's currently vi- capable of of four K video 
for right, streaming like, content like and for movies Netflix and shit like that. Yeah. But for video games, it requires a lot more po- power in the processor and in the GPU. And they're looking at, at releasing an iterative version. So the 4.5 or the PS4K or whatever you want to call it. Um, so it'll get a reworked uh, PS4 instead of branch out and creating an entirely new console. Right, right. Right, yeah, yeah. It's still yeah. a PS4. It's just yeah. just upgrading the... So I, I fully support this. I think this is a great idea. I think I like the iterations. I like when, I mean, because you and I both have the Star Wars version, which is actually the 3000 version or the, the 1003 version or however the, the numbering works out, which has yeah. some changes from the original console and the first update. This would be like a major revision, not just, you know, different buttons on the front or whatever. Um, right. I really support this. I think the cycles with the systems is getting far too fucking long. You know, I don't want to... Nobody... By the time the, the 360... Like right now, the 360 is so long in the tooth that when you're playing games on it, the games that are designed for it are lagging and they're jumpy and they're not getting full frame rates because they're downscaled versions of these way more intense versions for the newer consoles. And um, I'm I'm really okay with... with a 4k iteration of the ps4 my concern is are they going to sell it as a separate disc or will it be a here's this game it's 4k capable if you have a 4k machine if not it'll downscale like the current one does it downscales to 720p if you don't have it or whatever else like that's my concern are they going to have is it going to be an entirely new separate generation of games even if it's only an iteration of the hardware yeah well okay well First of all, it should be 10, 1080p, not 720p. Uh, no, 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 it'll I it'll scale down to 720p. Well, I had, the, I had the same thought. Where, but not only, okay, not only are they going to scale it down, but also are we going to be able to upscale our current hardware? Are they going to give us a way to upgrade our own machines, or if we want the new 4K version, well? You're out another four hundred bucks. Yeah, you're you're clearly gonna have to buy a new system because it is the processor and yeah. the GPU, which are far too integrated. Um, but yeah, that that does ring up bring up the question: like the current games that are out right now in 1080p, are they going to be resold and upscaled, or is the new system just going to upscale it naturally? I'm not a big fan of upscaling. Right. I'd rather just play it at the older resolution. Um, right, Junior, right. What, what's your take on all this? You're, you're not like yeah. a major gamer, but you're, you're you you got a you got a hand in the in the pot. I've screwed around a little bit with it. Um, honestly, if they're smart enough with it, you know, I'm, granted everybody's going for some kind of compatibility on everything. So I'd say if, you know, it'd be, it would behoove Sony to make sure that these games would be something like, I don't know how it works with the PlayStation 4, but I know on Xbox, whenever you get the game, whatever, there's always the downloadable portion, and that's what you'll end up with. So if it was something that they, you could download, you know, buy the disc, however it is, and then if there was a, you know, either upgrade to the 4K or it's going to stay in your 1080p or your 720, whatever you're going to do, then you know, make that all an all inclusive kind of deal. You know what I'm saying? So, oh. so they're going to release specifically the the 4K disc. I mean, I think that'd be a little asinine if they're you know to do that. Now, so, how much would it piss you off, Kent? If you know, because they always say that uh, you can't use the older PlayStation and Xbox. Both say that you can't use the older games like from previous systems and everything else because it's a new architecture, so that has to emulate. And emulation takes so much more power than than just running the original game did because you're actually having to recreate the entire machine and everything else. How bad would it be if this 4K version came out and now it's powerful enough to emulate the PS3 and PS2 and, and, and previous ones that the PS4 currently cannot emulate? Now, it can emulate the PS2 games uh, for, for the most part, but the PS3 games, it, it can't. So what if the 4.5 can emulate the 3? How would that uh, affect your your... your your forecast on it well okay well if if it could do that it might be time to purchase a second ps4 because that, that that's one thing that i hate man you you build a library of games i don't stop liking my playstation one or two games or three now like i don't stop liking those games i want to be able to play them but do i want 17 fucking consoles under my tv no so, no, see, you know, so N- Nintendo's got this covered. They did. They uh, they start out with this whole thing, and they're doing it. And I guess the games with gold, whatever it is, you got the you know Xbox Live Gold. 
anything that comes out on that, they're doing backwards compatibility with the old systems and shit. So if you buy it on your 360 as a games with gold, it's playable now as downloadable content on your Xbox One. So that's kind of a cool thing that they've been doing. Um, so I mean, it's only one console back, which kind of sucks. But you, you know, so how do you how do you prove ownership? Like you install, no. you insert the disc, and it will it will download the DLC. Oh no! It's or, all it's just it's all downloadable content on that stuff. It, it's as it's games right now that are as far as I understand it anyway that are released on the games with gold. It's like a thing that they do with the Xbox Live Gold. Right. They you know, two games a month now. It's four. They do, they double the games or whatever it is, and uh, they'll do whatever's for your Xbox 360. So if you have your 360 and you get the games on those ones, they'll make it automatically downloadable content on the one. So I mean, it's it, it, sometimes they're ancient games. They're yeah, games yeah, around, yeah. Can't can you're not you're not taking your disc for 360 and allowing the 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 ownership of the disc to enable you to download on the one. It's yeah. it, it's it's like if you know I'm buying I'm buying digital games for the PS4 almost exclusively. Now when they have the PS5 come out, then they say, well, you since you bought it digitally on the PS4, you can s- scale this up to the PS5. That's essentially what Xbox right. is doing. That's essentially oh, okay. how they're handling. No, no, no. It. That and that and that makes perfect sense. Like that's just oh, yeah. logic to me. Right. But I'm sa- what I'm saying is like my my Tony Hawk Pro Skater for PlayStation Two. Like, oh yeah. That's a di- that that was not downloadable. That wasn't right. even a thing. Right. When yeah. that came out. So. Yeah. They that's what I'm talking it. about. I want to still be able to play that game because it's a great game. But I've got this fucking 15 year old console that's collecting dust in the garage and probably broken whatever but i still want to play the game see i I fixed that by buying all those games for uh for xbox 360 when they were came out for that because they were all like five bucks each so uh, right but 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 you but in principle though you had to buy it again you already own a license to that content right it's like it's like it's like if you have a like like with a book right like this is a physical object. I own this, and I will always own this thing. But if we're talking digital, it's like if I buy something on Amazon, like now I can't read it in iBooks. You, you know what I mean? It's the same kind of thing with video games. It's like I bought this thing, and I should be able to play it. How, you know, but it doesn't transfer, and it's I don't know. It's annoying. It's incredibly annoying. I'm all for lifetime licenses. No matter what the platform is, see, there, there's uh, there's additional problems with that. We could, we could discuss this forever, but but if you design something for one system, um, and then you had you try to play it on another system, there's actual more work and uh, labor that goes into that. So no, 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 no. I get that. What what I'm saying, okay, for for the video game equivalency, right? So I buy a PS4 game, so mm-hmm. like Battlefront, right? Mm-hmm. Star Wars Battlefront I bought for the PS4. Mm-hmm. Let's say I buy an Xbox One or whatever the next Xbox is, mm-hmm. right? Or let, let's keep it simple. Let's say I bought the Xbox One. That title is available for Xbox One. Mm-hmm. But if I want to play it on my Xbox, I have to buy that title again. Why can't I just own a license to Star Wars Battlefront and play it on whatever the fuck it is that I happen to have. I could play it on PC. I could play it on PS4. I could play it on Xbox One. Absolutely, and that'd be even better once they, you know, and they should come up with a deal where they can cross the threshold on all these video game systems, and everybody can play against each other. You know, but it's we're not quite there yet. You know, I don't know why not. I mean, it doesn't make any sense other than Sony. You know, maybe <laughs> you know, being Sony and saying hell with it. Well, but, actually, uh, it's funny that you mentioned that because I, I guess there's there's rumblings now where. Microsoft and Sony are going to to do cra- uh, cross platform like server share type stuff where excellent like I can be I I can be playing on my PS4 you be on your Xbox One and we could be like FPSing with each other or you know or whatever yeah we'll see when that when that actually comes through uh, meanwhile so 4K version of the PS4 looking like looking like that might be coming out. Um, once this goes official, you can almost guarantee the Xbox is going to be right on the tails. Although the Xbox is selling about a third the number of PS4, so you know maybe they want to jump on this so they can actually try to catch up or whatever. But it's not going to be really that big until the 4K TVs and the 8K TVs, especially if if 4K TV is just a a, a step along a milestone along the way to to 8K the way 720 was to 1080. 
nobody's going to really yeah. subscribe to this 4K thing when the 8K is like so close around the corner. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be pretty interesting to see how that works out. So, all right. Um, uh, so Hulk Hogan and, uh, <laughs> Oh my God. <clears throat> so, all right. And, have you heard about this? So Hulk Hogan, like four years ago, uh, his, his buddy Bubba, the love sponge, I guess him and <laughs> so Hulk and okay, let this me back like up. All right. So let me beer. catch people up. Right. So let, let me catch everybody up. So <laughs> Bubba the Love Sponge is a shock jock in Florida. Uh, you know, shock jock, like, you know, a la Howard Stern. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, yeah. So, well, anyway, Hulk Hogan and Bubba the Love Sponge were like best buds for a bunch of years. And uh, apparently, Bubba didn't care if his friends fucked his wife. So Hulk had sex with with Bubba's wife and they recorded it. Well, somehow, some way, whatever, however this shit happens, the DVD or a copy of the DVD that they made ended up in the hands of Gawker. Gawker is one of those piece of shit uh, celebrity tabloid fucking websites or whatever. This is this is like two years ago when this happened. When the when the tape, the tape, the uh, DVD, um, got into the hands of this this tabloid website, they posted like a minute and a half of this sex tape with Hulk Hogan, right? So of course Hogan is pissed. He sues Gawker. He sued the the owner of Gawker and like a bunch of people. And this has been a court case for like the last couple of months, he sued for damages for a hundred, a hundred million dollars is what he sued for, for, um, uh, invasion of privacy, defamation of character, stuff like that. So they had the verdict today. He sued for a hundred million. The jury awarded him 115 million. And apparently there's still a punitive phase of the trial to come where Gawker is going to get fined even more. So let me ask you this. Did the jurors have to watch the tape? Because don't they deserve I some repercussions so. for it? <laughs> <laughs> I can only pray that that was in a court case somewhere. Hulk Hogan's <laughs> and guts. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Oh, did I mention this was in Florida? So, uh, <laughs> But uh, but no, awful. So my thing is, my thing is like this. Just why did they make it tape? Just like the, you know, yeah, I know. Like, why do you do that? And then you let it. Like, I don't know. But the the only time uh, I can see making a tape is if you want to do something to remember it later, and you're not going to have the person with whom you made the tape available to recreate the events, i.e., deployments and random shit like that. Or going to Korea. Going to Korea, Korea. And stuff. you, you know, yeah. um, but but yeah, why I, why I, <laughs> was was Hulk Hogan smacking his pud in the backyard to this tape, like I just, <sighs> probably I yeah I don't know, but the, but the thing about it is that websites like Gawker, right? Like, first of all, who the fuck who the fuck even goes to these goddamn things, and second, like what pieces of shit. Are like who are these fucking people that that do the tabloids like the 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 paparazzi and the the you know supposed journalists that work for tabloids like who the fuck are you and why are you breathing the same fucking air that I breathe? Um, I'm like, sorry, I, I missed what you said because I was browsing Gawker. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, that's, right, so, that's just one of the situations. It's just fucked up. All right, man. Uh, you, you got a thing in here. Analog clickbait. What's, what the hell is this about? Leads right into what, I was, what I'm trying to say. So you're standing in line at the grocery store. Okay. Do you, do you see like, uh, you know, uh, Macworld, PC Weekly? Uh, you know, what, what, what are the magazines? What, like, what do we have here? Out, you know, Outdoor Life? What, what is it next to the Snickers bars? Um, I usually no. see Air Force Times. Well, right, because you're at the BX. But, 
But in the local Walmart, no. Ha- half naked pictures of Natalie garbage? Portman. Um, unfortunately, no. And for, we, we have to look at all this garbage ass tabloid headlines. Like, uh, hold on. Uh, Jennifer's 10 years of pain. Ben is evil. Uh, boozing, cheating, and lies. This is analog clickbait. This is wait, wait, pick up wait, this wait, magazine. Wait, and why, look at this why, thing. why, 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 why do you have that? Exactly. I'll get that to was... that in a second. <laughs> right. I will get to that in a second. Stand by. Dollars and own that shit in your house, bro. Come on. Right. So stand by. Stand by, and I will. I will address that. Prop. You know, maybe. <laughs> Just but this is the, you know, this is a, this is exemplary of of the things that we were talking about earlier with clickbait. Like that, like this one here says, uh, Leo says Leo's nude photo scandal picks inside. Um, so not only are these garbage headlines, but also they're not true. Like you you open the magazine, and like for example, um. The Jennifer Garner Ben is evil thing. You go in there and the headline says that Jen tells all, but if you actually read a couple of paragraphs of it, she doesn't. She is not quoted at all in the article. It's her so-called friend gave an exclusive to Star Magazine. If you go to the Leonardo DiCaprio nude photos thing, it's talking about a movie that he made before Titanic came out. Where he had a nude scene. Nude photo scandal? Like, what the fuck are they talking about? It's it's analog clickbait. It's the yeah, same. Because I've never cracked not one of those damn magazines. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I, mean, I, I cracked one today. I cracked one today. Um, the only reason this is in my house, the only reason this is in my house, because I'm a lazy fucker, um, for Christmas this year, uh, somebody that's going to remain nameless uh, gave us a gift subscription to a magazine. Outstanding. And what typically happens is... <laughs> like, like, do they appears, hate you? <laughs> right. So it appears it appears uh, in the stack of mail. So I'm like, uh, let's see. Junk mail. Junk mail. Oh, there's a, a bill I need to keep. Uh, there's, um, you know, my... Oh, hey, my new debit card's here. Cool. Oh, oh, this, oh, shit can. Like, that's what happens to it, typically. But for the purpose of today's show, I decided to keep it so I could talk about analog clickbait. Anyway, so that's my rant. Mm, mm, mm. <sighs> so I I think providing someone a subscription to Star Magazine or a Star whatever they call themselves is akin to those... Uh, those graffiti bombs that you the, they used to fucking mail people. So you'd go and be like, oh, look, it's a letter. And you'd open it up and graffiti, would, or not graffiti, uh, 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 glitter, yeah. the glitter bombs. So you'd open it up and glitter, glitter would fucking oh, end up everywhere. God. It, it, that's yeah, essentially yeah, yeah. the same thing. Like that's like, that's like that's that's like like providing just a dose of assholery in your mailbox every fucking week. That's what that is. <laughs> Which I do encourage. Yeah, know? yeah, by all means. That's <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's I, I'm being trolled right now. So, but the reason I say that it's only in my house because of laziness, because I just haven't called the fucking phone number to cancel it. That's so. That's that's awesome, and I, I hope they give yep. you a runaround for like yep. half an hour before they let you cancel. Yeah, that's probably what's gonna happen. It's awesome. <laughs> all right, um, so uh, so that's about all our topics for the week. Yeah. Oh shit. It is. Yeah, the, it. the three-hour episode you 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 uh, you thought would happen is actually cut down a little bit. Actually, about an hour. <laughs> it took about an hour. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, Junior, uh, what you got going on, man? You you, uh, you joined us a little late, probably because you just got off work or whatever. But uh, you know, we won't hold that against you too bad. Um, what you right. got going on this week? Man, uh, well, this this weekend right now, I'm going to be turning a wrench on the Jeep a little bit. Uh, throw some parts at it. It's running like crap. But other than that, man, I got nothing else planned. So, okay. actually, I didn't. I didn't. I, you know, I didn't even think about the timing here. I just happened to be on Skype. I was talking. I was talking to the old lady and uh, the mess of them. They're out partying in Phoenix right now, so we were doing a little Skype thing for about an hour and a half at the bar. And then I'm like, "Hey, man, you guys are online. Let's see what's up." And there we are. <laughs> 
Right All on, right, right on. Kent, what about you, man? What you got going on this week? I think I think tomorrow we're going to try to go see 10 Cloverfield Lane. Ooh. <laughs> I still need to watch Cloverfield, so, you know, there's that. Yeah, you know, obviously I haven't seen 10 Cloverfield Lane yet, but I don't think it matters. I, I don't think they're related really at all other than – they exist in the same universe, so that, that you know there might be a reference to like, oh hey, remember that monster? Right. Oh, there's uh, monsters. You're already giving me spoilers, man. I literally know nothing about it at all. Um, it's not that big of a spoiler. I, <laughs> yeah, not really. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's, I, it's I probably mean, in the it's description. It's pretty obvious. Huh? Five minutes in the movie, so. Um, um, yeah. Uh, also, uh, I will give a little tease out there. Uh, very soon, hopefully. <laughs> Definitely less than two weeks, maybe within the next week, there will be one more podcast added to the Ritual Misery stream. Ah, Film Zone. Yes. Yes, it is a uh, work in progress that's about four episodes in, and we're probably going to start publishing that. Uh, It's going to be me and my son. And it's a it's kind of a passion project. It's something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while, and it's actually happening. So, very cool, very cool. Look forward to um, that. Oh yeah, that's badass. I will. Uh, I'll be cutting out the or releasing the episode with uh, with Tom Merritt for Undaunted this week. I'm hoping to do some more interviews. And uh, today, my time Saturday uh, is my daughter's 16th birthday. So I'm I'm that Ooh. much that much closer to being an old fuck. Yep. So there's there's all of that. Uh, I I I don't I don't need one. She's kind of a prude, so I'm I'm very happy about that. (laughs) (laughs) Good for her. Good girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So, uh, so Junior, thank you for for popping on uh, for, out, out of the out of the clear blue fucking sky. <laughs> thank you for me. That's great. Um, Kent, man, people can find you on Twitter at rm underscore del noche, and uh, also I hear you like beer. Yeah, man. You can also find me at ratebeer.com. Look up username del noche, and you can read my reviews, including my one for Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Check it out. Uh, yeah. There's my beverage. Yeah, you, you guys, uh, you guys shared plenty of those at South by last weekend. So, <laughs> uh, yep, yep. Uh, Good times. I, I'm Ethan Kane on Twitter. You can find me there. Uh, you can find the show at Ritual Misery. Submit ideas to our subreddit ritualmisery.reddit.com. We've actually got a few ideas in there. We're trying to make those happen. Um, I'm I'm in the process of emailing some people, and uh, there's been a at least one person on there has recommended a guest, and I'm currently working that. And uh, you can email us podcast at ritualmisery.com. Uh, you can call and leave us a voicemail, 567-69-TRNPC. That's 567-698-7672. Of course, you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. Uh, thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. For, uh, for Kent, for me, for Junior, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>